the Chiapa Model 1887 right now on Pirate Firearms and Reloading. Hey folks, so welcome back to a new year on the channel. Um, I've got something pretty special in front of me today. Uh, this is definitely one of my grails. This is a firearm I've wanted ever since I saw the first one. Um, many of you will probably recognize this from Terminator Judgment Day um, in a much more compact version, so we say. Um, so this is originally a Winchester model 1887. This one is actually a Chiapa reproduction out of SO. Originally Winchester went to John Browning and said we want a repeating shotgun and he proposed a pump action shotgun which in the modern world we know that's the one that took off. Winchester turned around and said well we're known for our lever action firearms let's keep with what our brand does we want a lever action one and he goes well okay I'll build you one so he did. Um, about 10 years later the pump action took off and the lever action shotgun was kind of forgotten to history. There's a few reasons why um, and I'll go through a few of those but I just want to note so there is obviously originals still around there is reproductions from ADI um, out of Australia that were very very limited there was reproductions from Norinco um, they were not without their problems um, which I'll talk about in a second and Chiapa which is what this one is here um, I think this is probably about as good as they ever functioned and there's definitely a few quirks to this thing so this is the ultimate gun nerd shotgun there's no real reason to own one of these unless you shoot cowboy action or you just love firearms technology so as always the shotgun is clear both the chamber and the magazine and you may have just picked up on something here where I'm accessing the magazine tube from and that is the interesting part and why a pump action is vastly superior so Chiapa's done a beautiful job with their color case hardening I really hope the camera does it justice um, beautiful blue barrel and beautiful blued magazine tube below it as well so overall a really nice shotgun I have covered up the buttstock with um, a leather pad with some round holders this is one of my dummy rounds unloaded so we all know the problem with a shotgun is it's always empty so it never have, hurts to have a few more on board um, so there are five round magazine now originally they didn't come this short this is an 18 and a half inch version so originally they came in 30 and 32 inch and then a year later in 1888 Winchester offered them in a I believe 20 inch version so this is not far off being 18.5 um, but it is definitely short some of the longer barrel versions that Chiapa do do come with interchokes this is a fixed improved cylinder um, they never really advertised what it was um, but the gauge says improved cylinder put it that way so one of the problems with the Norinkos is this four end piece here is basically sandwiched between the barrel and the magazine tube and on the Norinko copy these tend to work their way forward please to report that this does not do that now one of the biggest downsides a lot of people are going to find with this shotgun is it will only cycle 70 mil or two and three quarter shells you cannot put three inch shells in there i haven't tried any of the shorter stuff like mini shells in that they're kind of hard to come by sometimes um, but it cycles a 70 millimeter or two and three quarter star crimp absolutely beautifully what i did notice is i do have some buckshot rounds that are 12 pellet double lock buck and they're roll crimped with a card over the top and because there's still a, a two and three quarter inch pull but their finished length is slightly longer and they can propose a little bit of a cycling issue and this is where we're going to get into the quirks of what makes the shotgun interesting 
So you'll note the design and the breech face here is very much similar to a rolling block because that's essentially what this is. It's a rolling block shotgun, okay? Obviously, it has a lifter and a magazine, which the original rolling blocks, of course, never did. The other really cool thing is when you cycle this thing all the way forward, if I can get the camera angle perfect, it gives you almost perfect... No, no I'm going to completely struggle with the tripod here. It gives you perfect access down the barrel. So if you do need to clean it, get any lead out or anything like that, it's almost perfect. There's also a notch here in the top of the receiver in order to sight with the brass bead here on the front. So that is something you do sit quite low. Um, and just as a side note, the um, it is a steel butt plate with color case hardening as well. So that theme continues on through. It obviously does not come with the leather um, wrap either. But as you can see here, you can see the end of the hammer. Um, you can see the main spring here, the hammer spring. You can see your trigger sitting down here. And this is your sear with your half cock and your full cock. Obviously that deep notch there is your half cock and the flat one is the full cock. So all the internals are exposed in this open position, which is kind of cool if you like the engineering behind firearms. Um, it's definitely a little bit of a clunky action, but that's the way they were designed. And you do have to be really rough when you run the lever. If you're gentle with it, it won't cycle. I'll show you what I mean here. So this is actually your exposed hammer as well. So it does give you the ability to decock the hammer if you need to. There is that half cock safety there, which will not operate. And then a full cock position there, which will allow the hammer to fall. So when you pull this action back, and I'll see if I can give you the best angle possible. You can see that obviously just like a rolling block, the bolt rotates out of the way. And now you can see the catch for the magazine tube but you notice the lifter didn't come up, and this is what I mean about running it rough. You've really got to pick that guy forward in order to get the lifter to come up. Same with the extraction process. The extraction process needs to be very vigorous in order to pull that out of the chamber and actually get it to clear the receiver. And it is also, the ejection is aided by the next casing coming up in the lifter. So that was something that the Norinkos did. If there wasn't a next round coming up in the lifter, they would really struggle to eject. This actually goes pretty well, I'm quite surprised. So now for loading. So once again, this is a complete dummy round. It's got lead in it for weight, but nothing else. And of course a wad. So this is where things get a little interesting with this design. So. At this point, you can't access the magazine tube. You have to push down that lifter first. Once you've done so, simply drop one in the top and push forward. Now, something to note here too, you want to keep the shotgun relatively level when you do this, because this is the catch bar here. And if you do have it at an angle, sometimes that bar won't flick up. It's not captivated by any spring or held in position. So obviously you'll cycle it forward, Bring it back down. Now you see I didn't cycle that rigorously enough and it's still sitting in the magazine tube. So, so let's do this one more time. So push that down. You can actually push it down with the case. The other thing you can do is really quickly drop two into this. So you can drop one in, push it down the lifter, drop another one on top and you'll actually notice that this one disappears into the magazine tube without actually loading. When you bring it back it's obviously ready to load. That lifter is in the downward position. You want to keep a bit of angle on it and push it in like that, right? So now you'll cycle the shotgun. Comes up on the lifter like that. I really hope I caught that angle. Obviously into the chamber. And once you've fired it, you hit your tripod on the way out. <laughs> Something else you're going to want to do too, you'll notice that the screws decide they're going to back out. 
um, particularly these two screws here, which are the main pivot screws, they will tend to back out. A little bit of Loctite will be your friend in this case, particularly if you're going to put a lot of rounds through it. The main thing that disappointed me about this shotgun from Chiapa, and it's a 30 second job to solve it, it is actually drilled and tapped in the top of the barrel. Now I have no idea why you would want to put an optic on a shotgun like this, but I've done it. It doesn't actually come with the screws to blank those off, so you will have to get them. They're a uh, 6 by 48 screw, and that's pretty common in terms of drilled receivers and barrels, so you should be able to pick those up from a gunsmith or a gun store. I guess everyone wants to know, does it kick? Well, I'd be lying to you if I said it didn't kick, but it's quite tame for a shotgun, particularly a 12 gauge of this size. So typically your manual action, things like pump actions, single shot, cyber sides kick more. This is not bad. However, it does weigh nearly 11 pounds, which does make a big difference. Now I've put an entire 25 box of 12 pellet double lock buck through it and have felt absolutely fine. I fired those first shots before the leather went on it and it's only a piece of leather over the steel butt pad so very very surprised on that one I had a feeling it was going to kick like a mule it doesn't so that is the Chiapa model 1887 which is a Winchester clone have a good one thanks for watching don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you don't miss out on anything and if you found this video helpful, please share it with your friends. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below. Catch you next time.